Hi, my name's Peter Coffin. How are people still talking about the Willy Wonka thing in Scotland a week ago? There was this crappy Willy Wonka experience uh, that was hilarious. It was badly put together, shoddy, ridiculous, stupid. And while most of the internet, uh, like myself, simply found it funny, certain people thought that it was important to point out how evil it is. I thought that this trend was going to last maybe a day or so. But here's the thing. Just being mad isn't what's going on here. This is mad for money. There is no name more synonymous with fraud than Billy McFarland, the, the guy who sold luxurious music festival tickets and ended up serving people this. Now, every time expectations don't meet reality, everyone talks about it like it's fire festival and people are calling this the new fire festival moment, but for kids. I just want to really point out how amazing that little piece of rhetoric was. So he makes an implication here that he's being critical of people overusing Fire Festival to characterize other things that maybe don't go as advertised. And since he did this first, so early in the video, he sets this expectation that he's not doing the cheap thing and then immediately pivots to doing it. It's Willie's chocolate experience. It was sold to parents as a wonderful little event to bring your kids to in Glasgow, Scotland. Now you may notice that all of these pictures are AI generated, which might raise some red flags as it should. So immediately we get into what this actually is. It's an overstatement of harm to fear monger AI because that gets views. A pass a dice of sweet teats. I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, something tells me they're going to fleece you for all the money you have. Now, this is an absolute perfect cross section of what this actually is versus how he's characterizing it. The whole pass a dice of sweet teats thing, that is mwah, beautiful, hilarious shit. You know how back in the day, lots of people uh, laughed at bad translations between languages, um, English. Uh, now, I would argue, we have an equivalent, which is less problematic. We have AI nonsense. A passadice of sweet teats. That is beautiful. But to him, it is a signifier that you are about to be swindled for all of the money you have. Pretty quickly, that's exactly what happened when parents paid their hard-earned money to get this expectation and this reality. Uh, basically, an empty warehouse that they put a few little ropes and a little sad poster on the wall that doesn't even fit. Basically, if uh, any county fair has ever put up watercolor paintings of their rides or what to expect, which is always overinflated in exactly the same way that AI art is, is that a scam? Is that the county fair fleecing you for all of the money that you have? I've been to many county fairs, some good, some bad, all have similar imagery. Now, it's AI generated, so that means it's evil. But if anybody saw that photo and believed that that's exactly what they were going to be walking into, I'm just going to say that they're the most naive person that has ever lived. You can go back to the... Uh, 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, and find incredibly similar instances of this exact thing minus AI. Most of them are about of this quality. That is to say, uh, they are not premium experiences, and no matter what they sell themselves as, they are a thing to take your kids to in town. It's not Disney World. And yes, I know this topic has sort of been beaten to death. In fact, I'm the one of the last ones to it, which ashames me. Being the last to this story implies that there was a period of time spent deciding whether he would cover it. The reason for this is that it is a fundamentally unserious story. It's just a shitty little attraction that people put together in town so parents would have something to do and they could try to make some money off of it. You ever been to a corn maze? The man behind it got unmasked 
and his history of abusing AI to rip people off has actually come to light in an interesting way. What is tantamount to a, a funny human interest story to this type of content creator is gold. Scam gold. I can unmask someone. Ooh. People were sold this dream. They paid money. And of course, they were met with severe disappointment. There's not much of a theme to it besides like looking up whimsical on Timu or something. Actually, if you look at the website, they never say Willy Wonka. Instead, they call it Willy's Chocolate Experience. And as you might imagine, that's because of the copyright implications. And if you look at the actual script, you find out that internally, they weren't calling him Willy Wonka. They just wanted you to think that by calling it Willy's Chocolate Experience. They actually called him Willie McDuff. You're telling me that this local attraction uh, that isn't put on by a well-known company that people are aware of, uh, it's just a, a local thing like a playground, uh, you're telling me that they don't have the rights to Willy Wonka? What a reveal, folks. I, oh, wow. Wow. That's right. They used an AI script generator to not only create the AI art, but also the script behind their whole dumb scheme. You see what I'm talking about when I say overstatement of harm to scaremonger about AI for traffic? Wonky Doodle is straight out of the AI garbage pile of possible names. They also have a supervillain called The Unknown. He's a evil chocolate maker within the walls, which already sounds stupid, and it's obvious they did absolutely zero revisions to this script idea. But then you find out that the ultimate climax of this whole story is that the unknown's weakness is tidiness. Not sweets, not chocolate. Well, Coffee Zilla, you're not even thinking about the consistency of the story. If he is an evil chocolate maker... Why would sweets be his weakness? Like, you're not making any more sense than the AI, my friend. Like, you're, you're calling all that shit gibberish, but, like, like, that's not just dumb and lame, like what you're calling this script. It's also not logically consistent. So, uh, are you scamming people, CoffeeZilla? Is this a scam? Instead of having some grand reveal with this anti-graffiti gobstopper or whatever, instead they tell a guy with a uh, little cloak and a mask on, just hide behind a mirror and let that work, which seemed to do nothing except traumatize the kids who were unfortunate enough to be there. What is that? It's the end of You can see the kids crying in the background. Traumatized from what really should be our supervillain. This guy looks like something straight out of the actual void. Trauma? Again, this is a massive overstatement of harm. That's really the point that I'm trying to get at here. What could be making fun of something because it is badly executed, which is it, uh, like 100% yes, absolutely. This is badly executed. And so are so many of these things. Uh, every parent has been exposed to something like this. But this isn't memeing on a lame thing. It's talking about how people are getting scammed and these kids are being traumatized. And th that's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Nonetheless, who thought this would be appropriate for a Willy Wonka themed, like, nice time with the kids? We actually have this other view of uh, the Willy Wonka experience, an extended cut, the Zack Snyder edition of this horror show. Here, the great unknown. <laughs> I love there, I think you can actually see that people thought it's actually like kind of amusing instead of just horrifying. Here, you can also just see how empty this place is. Gotta move on from that, though. I've been saying that this is traumatizing kids, and it apparently it, it was found funny by people there. Hmm. 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 Here you can also just see how empty this place is. I mean, it's the floors look like they haven't been washed in literally years. Funny enough, if any event ever needed the anti-graffiti gobstopper to clean up the whole mess, it's this one. This place looks absolutely disgusting. It's a warehouse that somebody rented. Like, the floor looks clean. Shut the fuck up. Again, overstatement of harm. After paying... 35, 40 bucks as a parent. And the disappointments just continue. The Chocolate River doesn't move at all. It's way overcrowded. And there you can see the sad cups of lemonade that each kid got. I mean, this was truly a breathtaking scam. As I said, 
really on par with the fire festival. Shut the fuck up. A moment ago, you acknowledged that the cost of ticket prices for this thing were $35, $40. And you basically walked through a shitty warehouse with some stuff in it. That is not on par with the fire festival. At the fire festival, uh, there was no water. Now, when your event takes place over the course of several days and people stay there for the full duration, not having running water is a serious problem. Another serious problem when people are going to be around for multiple days is not having uh, toilets, medical staff, cell service. All those were problems at the fire festival, and people rightfully criticized these problems. This Willy Wonka thing, it's a couple of hours of your day. Maybe. If that. And there was no danger of you dying from it. Whatever you think about the fire festival, uh, not having uh, water, facilities, medical staff, or a means to contact the outside world, given the lack of those things, uh, it's, it's a lot more serious. Well, I mean, this is basically sums up what the Willy's chocolate experience was. And obviously this set the internet on fire. People were furious. Everyone wanted to know like, who can we make pay for this? They found the guy behind it. It's this guy, Billy Cool. This guy uses ChatGPT for his entire life story. And all of it is basically AI garbage. You can see that, but it's all zero stars, one star. All of the cover art is clearly AI. And then all the comments also say they're terrible books. And why do you care? Why do you give a shit that he's making bad AI books? Why do you give a shit? Why do you care? Like he's like, oh, the threat, the scariness of AI. See these terrible books that got zero stars? Like, shut the fuck up. Found everything about this guy, his address, his everything. But ultimately, I, I, I don't think someone should be harassed over something like this. I mean, especially if they're going to give refunds. It was totally a scam and the parents have every right to be upset. A truly goofy scam that sets a new standard for what a fire festival type event is. I think in the future when this stuff happens, we say you got wonky doodled. No. I mean, it's fine to say you got wonky doodled. I, yeah, that's actually kind of funny. But this doesn't set any standard for any kind of scam. Which brings me to the actual point of what I want to say today. This is not the most egregious form of overstatement of harm. We have all seen much, much more egregious versions of it. But all week long, as I have watched various outlets, outlets that you saw during the course of CoffeeZilla's video, use the word scam and act as though this is a, a grave injustice as opposed to just some dopey thing that some idiot did, you can see why people constantly overstate harm. I'll say it again, the James Summerton incident, massive overstatement of harm. It's such a massive overstatement of harm that when he does the thing that they say that he should have done, citing his sources, it doesn't matter. In fact, James Summerton released a new video in which he cited absolutely everything, down to stock footage he used, which is, by the way, unnecessary and stupid. Don't do that. And stupid cunt H-bomber guy watches it and gets all huffy. And the overstatement of harm has made impossible standards to live up to. Clearly, it doesn't matter what James Somerton ever does. Uh, they do not expect Mr. Bond to talk. Uh, they expect him to die. It's so funny that his takeaway was, I just need to cite my sources. This is the same kind of overstatement of harm as the jogger who cheated in the marathons. Oh no, the marathon integrity has been compromised. Let's ruin this guy's life. You know where that ended? That guy killing himself. And CoffeeZilla tells everybody, oh, don't harass the AI baddie. But the overstatement of harm transforms these things from mistakes or failures into villain origin stories. And... You have to beat the villain. You're the protagonist in this story called life. It's your responsibility to end their tyranny.
it's garbage. And whether it's H-Bomb or it's CoffeeZilla or that guy that ran the website tracking marathon cheaters, they farm engagement and views by claiming something is much worse than it is. That's the business model. To get down to the incentives and rewards, the things that truly matter, the problem here is that their investigations are their livelihood. They aren't doing this stuff just because they really, truly care. They're doing it because it's their job. And if there isn't something for them to investigate and care about, they have to make something. Because that's their job. That's the type of world we live in. And that's the problem. Not any one of these individuals. I don't want you to think that H-Bomb is evil, even though he's a cunt. I don't want you to think that CoffeeZilla is a villain, even though I think this is hyperbolic and dumb. I do want you to understand why this is bullshit. It's nonsense. It isn't how uh, to observe and talk about these phenomena. Pointing and laughing at we got Willy Wonka at home. Uh, yeah, fine. You know, that it's funny. It's something that I, at the beginning of it, enjoyed. I thought, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Look how dumb this is. But through the week, I saw it become a means for them to demonize AI as a tool, for one. And for two, to continue in this mode of overstatement of harm that ultimately corners people and provides no opportunities for getting better. I think that's all that I've got for you today. Um, lick the like button, slurp all over it. Become a subscriber. Maybe a, a patron. Get it? Pay me money. Leave a comment. Hope you have a good day. Uh, bye.